Welcome back. We just completed building this pipeline and copied the cases and deaths data from the ECDC folder of my GitHub to our data lake. Next, we need to copy the hospitalization data. Let's see what we can do. One solution would be to create another pipeline like this which is similar to the previous pipeline except that the file names are different. If we go with the solution we need to create another four data factory components. The link services, we can use the same link services, but we need to create two new data sets and we need to create the copy activity and the pipeline. If you assume that we've had 50 of these data sets to copy from the ECDC portal, we would end up having 200 new components that seems too excessive. So you might be thinking, is there a way to call the same pipeline but passing the file names because they are the only things which are different? And you're right, ADF gives you the ability in the form of parameters and variables. Let's have a look at what they are. So these concepts will be familiar for anyone who's done any kind of programming before. So parameters or external values passed into pipelines, datasets, or linked services. A pipeline can receive a parameter, send that to a dataset, and the dataset can then send that to a link service. So it is all three components, pipelines, datasets, and link services can be parameterized. The value of the parameter cannot be changed inside a pipeline. Once you pass it in, actually the value remains the same. On the other hand, variables are internal values that are set inside a pipeline. The value can be changed inside a pipeline. For example, you can increment the value of variable inside your pipeline using a set variable or an append variable activity. So that comes in handy when you want to iterate over something and you want to set the initial and the end values for those. You can use variables for that. So effectively this is what parameters and variables are. With this knowledge gained, let's see what we can do to make our pipeline more dynamic so that it can deal with a different file every time it's called. Let's start with looking at the differences between the two files we are talking about. So as you can see here, the source itself for the two files start with the same URL, but the relative URL which we put in is different between the two files. So this is what formed part of our link service. So we can use the same link service for both of the datasets, but for the datasets itself, we need to parameterize the relative URL so that we can pass. In different values depending on which file we want to copy. Similarly for the sync, the data lake storage itself is the same data lake storage. So no changes to the link services being required. And also the container and the folder are exactly the same. It's just the file name, which is different between the two. So we just need to parameterize the file name so that the data set can deal with a different file every time it's being called with one. Let's now switch over to the data factory and implement these changes we discussed. Okay. Here we are back in our data factory. Let's start making the changes. Let's start with the data set first. So this is the source data set, and as we discussed, we want to parameterize the relative URL. So let's click on parameters and then click new. And we want to have relative URL list the parameters, so I've called it as a relative URL and you got a type you can select, but string is good enough for us. And if you come back into connections again, and we don't want the relative URL anymore. And if you click on add dynamic content, now you can see the parameters listed here. So this is the parameter we created. So click on that one. So that'll be a dataset, dot relative URL. So what that says is in the current dataset, and this is the relative URL parameter, which we want to use and click OK. And now that's being replaced. Now we've done the change to the source dataset. Let's pick this sync data set. Here as we said, actually we want to parameterize the file name here. So I'm going to call the parameter as file name. Again, the type string's good enough for us. And if you come back into connections, get rewards already there and then click on our dynamic content and it should list the file name is the parameter. Pick that and click finish. So that is both source and the sync data sets is parameterized now. So now we need to make changes to the pipeline itself. I want to create a couple of variables within the pipeline and then pass those variables to the data sets to test the changes we made here first. So let's come to variables here and click new. And I'm going to call the first one a source relative URL and then we need another one which is for the sync. It's going to be called sync file name. 
and we want the values for those ones. So we are going to copy the hospitalization data. So the source URL for that is this here, and the CSV file for the sink is this one, hospital admission CSV. So this is what we saw in our presentation. So that's everything. And then we want to now pass that into the activity. So if you click on the activity itself, now when you click on the source, it'll tell you that actually this source data set now needs a new property as well, which is the relative URL. So that's what we created inside the data set as if you can remember. So that is the parameter relative URL. So we need to pass that from the pipeline. So click on the activity and then click on source. And now we need to map our variable to this parameter. So if you click on the add dynamic content again, you will be able to pick the source relative URL variable that we created and click finish on that. And similarly for the sync, you need to pass in the file name. So the file name is in our variable called source file name and click finish. So that is the changes made. Now let's try and debug it. And it should copy the hospital admissions data from the URL into our data lake. So that's succeeded. Let's have a look at the details. And it's picked up the file, which is about a megabyte. Yeah, that's correct. So that's about 1 MB. And it's copied the file across. Let's see whether the file exists in our storage account. I'm going to switch over to my storage account and click refresh. Yes, the file's there. Let's download it and open the file into Excel to verify the content of the file. But if I switch back to our data factory, this is great, but again, we got a hard-coded URL and the file name here. So what we can do is to, we can parameterize that into the pipeline and we can make it even better. So in the next session, I'll take you through how to parameterize the pipeline and how to pass in the values from a trigger. I'll see you in the next session.